Nazis. Oh, hey, this is Okoto Derek from Screaming Eagle Airsoft. I just wanted to tell you that I was getting ready to do my first review, and the first review is going to be on the M1A1 Thompson submachine gun. This machine gun was submachine gun was used during World War II by quite a few different countries in a lot of different theaters of operations. Um, as you can see, it looks very sweet. I mean, I like the appearance of this gun. Um, but here, let me put this on safe and start the review. Koto Derek from Screaming Eagle Airsoft again. Um, I had to reposition the camera so that we can actually have a table here out in the field so you can see uh, this Thompson M1A1 submachine gun. Um, as you can see, um, with it attached, I have the 1,000 round drum magazine. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Um, this is probably a tight fit. As you can see, there we go. Um, and uh, I'm going to start from the back, work my way forward, so you can kind of just see all the different aspects of this gun. Um, first of all, I want to go over with the appearance of the gun. The appearance of the gun is awesome. How can you get better than awesome? Um, I'm a World War II enthusiast and uh, comparing this weapon to other Thompsons, this Thompson is remarkably, um, is remarkable, let's just say that. Uh, the wood pieces on this weapon are plastic. The, uh, they're ABS plastic, and, but they have a wood grain appearance and they look like just a sanded, uh, polished wood. Okay, like, it, like as if this Thompson was new out of the box in uh, 1942. Okay. Um, now, starting at the back, there is a uh, there's battery compartment right here. In the back, there is a catch. You open it up. That allows you to put your finger inside, pull, and twist the battery compartment battery comes right out that's not going to be a problem let me undo that okay just your standard uh, 1100 uh, milliamp 8.4 volt AEG battery um, and it has a fuse right there uh, the battery compartment is actually kind of deep I'm not going to say it's wide, but it is deep. Uh, I haven't experimented by putting other batteries in there yet. Um, well, actually, let me restate that. I tried a uh, 7.4 volt battery in this. Um, it didn't fire. So uh, I, I strongly recommend an 8.4 or larger. Um, if this catch is down, closed, this back plate will not close. You have to open it up, close it, lock it sealed. Okay. Um, working our way forward, uh, you'll notice that it has a military style, uh, World War II style sight post. Um, it has an iron sight along with a peep sight. Um, this sight has nine different positions. You can pop, pop it in, pull it out, left and right. Okay, depending on how accurate or, you know, the zero of your weapon. Okay. Okay. Um, flipping this over, you're going to see that there are two switches on this side. Uh, the first switch is safe or fire. Okay. And they work, they're very smooth and they click into place. This one here is full auto, semi-automatic, also very smooth, and they click into place. Right here we have the magazine catch. Um, to, to
to release the magazine, you just press this up, pull your magazine out. Okay. Um, I've tried using my thumb to lift this up. My thumb just can't get in the right position to use my left hand to change magazines. Like I pull a magazine out to change, I can't do it with my thumb. What I would have to do is flip it over like this and then do it, and then it'll go in without a problem. Okay? Um, just flip it over your shoulder, and you got it, no problem. Okay, um, that's the magazine catch. Pistol grip feels comfortable in the hands. Okay? Um, back to the other side. Okay, um, you'll notice that there is a charging handle. Uh, this charging handle does nothing. It is for aesthetics only. It does reveal the spring casing inside, uh, the spring chamber, and it's, it's just cool to play with, okay? Um, seems pretty solid, but I'm not going to risk it. You never know. It's, a, it's an airsoft gun. Now, the, whole, the entire body here is uh, stamped steel. It is not uh, welded or riveted or anything like that. It is uh, stamped into the right shape. Um, underneath the trigger guard, that those where it folds together is actually a small weld right here. Okay, not noticeable. Um, you'll notice that the hop up is located right here. So while you're engaged in the field and you realize your hop up isn't set right or it's or it's slipped, as you know they all do, you can just hop it up and continue to fire okay so you're while you're in the field you can make those changes on the fly um, this rubber cap uh, I'm not, this plastic this plastic cap in the front is required by law uh, inside the United States uh, but I know that a lot of you like to take them off during the games um, it, it will come off this one actually is a two-piece it's split down the, the, the center there the top piece comes off, the bottom piece comes off, and when you're done with your game, you can always put it back on to take it home. Okay. Um, so that's basically all the features. Oh yes, there's one more thing everybody gets excited about. Um, it doesn't really affect me, but it might excite you too, so I just wanted to let you know that this is the trademark of the Thompson submachine gun. Thompson is a licensed uh, cyber gun to make this weapon. Um, it does say Auto Ordnance Corporation, Massachusetts, United States, made in China. And then on the other side it says U.S. property, and over here it has the Thompson machine gun caliber 6 millimeter. We know it was a 45, but uh, this fires 6 millimeter BBs. So um, overall it's a it's an awesome weapon this sling does not come with it um, it comes with a um, it comes with a beginner sling and I swapped that out with an authentic World War II uh, Thompson submachine gun sling um, it also has the ability to, to use the um, high capacity uh, stick magazine the stick magazine will hold 300 rounds um, you just pop it open here, reload it, close it, and then wind it up at the bottom. You know, you're all familiar with the high cap magazines. Um, same thing with the drum magazine. Um, you just pop it open, fill it up full of a thousand BBs, close it up, and it has a winding wheel right here. This is how you wind it up, and then you'll be able to fire your ammo. Um, this one I found is extremely tight in the weapon, uh, but that might just be mine. It, it, I don't know if that's a standard. And I've noticed that the stick magazines slide in uh, nice and nice and easy. Um, you know, no effort. Okay, it goes in, it's in snug. This weapon doesn't rattle. There's no um, real loose parts. Um, there is a slight looseness to the outer barrel here when I force it to move, uh, but just 
normally when I'm out and about, I don't even notice that. Okay. Um, take that magazine out. Um, these magazines will fit in your standard Repro uh, Thompson magazine pouches. Okay, as you can see. Um, I haven't found a uh, drum pouch that I feel comfortable with, so I start my games with this, and when it's empty, I just put it in a cargo pocket, you know, and carry it around empty. Um, and unless we go to another round or something, I'll reload, I'll put these back in the pouch, and I'll start with that in the gun. Um, I really appreciate you coming out and checking out my video for uh, the Thompson M1A1 submachine gun. Again, um, you should come check out our, our new website at ScreamingEagleAirsoft.com. Um, we'll enjoy your business. Thank you.